And now to discuss the rising anti-Semitism in our world, it's my honor to invite Paul Packer, Chairman of the Commission for the Preservation of America's Heritage Abroad, Dr. Susanna Reiner, Germany's Ambassador to Israel, Frédéric Rog, the Chargé d'Affaires of the French Embassy in Israel, and Ron Brumer, Executive Director of Operations at the Ministry of Strategic Affairs and Public Diplomacy, and a former Israeli diplomat in Chile and the US. Uh, good morning to you all and thank you for joining us. Uh, Paul pa Packer, you flew all the way from the United States. How do you, as chairman of President Trump's Preservation of America's Heritage Abroad, connect your work with the fight against rising anti-Semitism in the US and around the world? Thank you. Actually came uh, from Europe, a little closer, but that actually ties into everything that um, I've been appointed by the president to do and to make sure, actually you had on your slide here. Paul, just speak in, into the mic. Sorry, I actually came from Europe, which ties into a lot of what I have to do here to talk about anti-Semitism. And just a little uh, comment on the little slide you showed beforehand, the United States understands. The United States not only understands, the United States gets it. Anti-Semitism is out there, BDS is out there, everybody speaks against BDS. The United States was, is just 243 years old. All of your countries, that you represent here, they're hundreds, thousands of years old. They're towns that I go to, they've been around for over a thousand years. The United States, as everyone knows, is called the, the greatest mosaic in the world. We were, most of the people that are there, they all came from different countries, they all came from different countries. And we now are the strongest country in the world, the freest country in the world. And that only comes from one thing, hard work, but at the same time, remembering where we came from. And the hard work for everybody that's there is really going back to their roots. And the heritage, uh, being Jews, Israel knows the most important. Everyone comes to Israel, everybody's a Jew. Everybody came from somewhere. 35 years ago, when President Reagan uh, passed the bill to assign the bill to create the commission, the commission really goes back to Europe, Eastern Europe, to make sure that those countries where Jews came from, where Jews were murdered, where Jews were extinguished, that those countries don't forget what happened. Now, with the roaring, uh, ugly head of anti-Semitism popping up all over again, we're busier than we've ever been. I'd say in the last two years, two and change years, since I've been appointed by President Trump, this commission has never, ever taken uh, or had the stature that it's had in Washington, and I've never had such great audiences when I come to visit a lot of your countries. We're gonna be very busy. We're extremely busy, unfortunately, when I do go to some countries, they say, anti-Semitism, it's really not as bad as you would think here. And I said, so why are there eight army men sleeping in your synagogue? Why are there eight army men guarding your synagogue? It's because there is anti-Semitism. It's because there were horrible things that have happened, and there are threats that are happening to your communities every day. It's a challenge that I offer to all your diplomats here. Get on board. Get on board with the United States. Because when the United States says and means the, we're not gonna stand for it, we are not gonna stand for it. This administration has reached out to all their allies to let them know that the words of Secretary Pompeo last year, last May, anti-Zionism anti is equal to anti-Semitism. That really is something that America stands by and, all, and we expect all our allies to stand by also. Thank you. Uh, Your Excellency Ambassador Reiner, um, Paul Packer talked about the anti-Semitism rearing its ugly head, and it certainly seems to be in Europe, throughout Europe, and in, in Germany as well. What is the German government doing to combat this phenomenon? Thank you very much. Thank you, Steve. Thank you for bringing the German perspective into this uh, important discussion on anti-Semitism. As a German ambassador, of course, I would wish that anti-Semitism had disappeared once and for all after 1945 and after the Shoah. However, as we have seen, uh, this is not the case. We uh, are now again uh, witnessing, let me say, a new wave of anti-Semitism everywhere, 
in Germany, in Europe, and particular, this is particularly true for the digital sphere. Anti-Semitism impact the Jewish people, but by no means them alone. We consider any anti-Semitic incident as targeted against Jewish and non-Jewish citizens of Germany. They strike at the core of our values and our coexistence. They are the expression of a deeply anti-democratic attitude. The attack in Halle on Yom Kippur in the center of Germany was a true nightmare for me, but also, and I would like to underline that, for the vast majority of Germans. We suffered with the Jewish community of Halle and all over Germany. And right after that attack, the Chancellor made it absolutely clear, again, that there is a zero tolerance for racism, anti-Semitism, and hatred in Germany. We will do everything in our power to ensure that Jews in Germany can live in freedom and security. We know that we have to act vigorously. My government is responsible for the security of lives of Jews in Germany, and we will continue to fully assume this responsibility. So with your, regard to your question, there was a new action plan for the fight of right-wing extremism and hate speech inaugurated immediately after that attack. German legislators are working to ensure that offenses of anti-Semitism, hate, hate crimes, and incitement to violence will be completely covered by the criminal code. They uh, will also be enforced on social media. Online offenders must be prosecuted just like offenders in the real world. And like in the real world, the internet perpetrators must be taken to justice. Already now, our existing legislation criminalizes speech inciting to hatred and violence, including Holocaust denial and Holocaust distortion. This legislation needs to be fully applied and fully enforced online and offline. These measures on their own, and there is many more than these legislative measures, will, of course, not be enough. Even more important, I think, is the existence of a strong civil society which firmly imports, uh, supports the values of democracy and seeks to instill it into the next generation. It depends on every one of us in Germany and in Europe. We have to prevent populist right-wing, nationalist right-wing, and extreme right-wing views from taking over the public debate in Germany. As a society, we will make sure that Jewish life in Germany is not only welcomed, but is an, in, an integral part of our society. And the overwhelming majority of, German, of the German population sees it exactly like that. So the commemoration of the liberation of Auschwitz-Birkenau in 2020 uh, will give us an opportunity to underscore the enormous importance that both the German government and the society attach to honoring the responsibility from the past. We will also assume the presidency of uh, IRA and during the, our presidency of the EU in the second half of 2020, we will make the fight against anti-Semitism one of our main subjects. And for this fight, I would like to add that um, the most, in this most important and crucial endeavor, we count also on the support of our, one of our most important international partners, and that is Israel. We are fighting at the side of Israel and not against it. Thank you. Uh, Frederick Roga, we have seen an alarming uh, increase in anti-Semitic incidents in France as well, including recently in Nice. What is France and your government doing uh, to counter such anti-Semitism? Well, uh, let me say, first of all, on, on the figures, actually, we do have a phenomen phenomenon of anti-Semitism we need to fight, but we, I wouldn't state that we have a, a recent rise. I mean, we, we have had constantly a certain level uh, uh, of concern on, on these issues. Uh, and, and we, we do face them. Uh, I'm very happy that you, uh, you showed uh, the stance our president 
uh, took earlier this year on, on, on the issue of anti-Semitism and, and BDS. So at the highest level uh, of the French state, I mean, uh, our, our uh, position is uh, absolutely clear that uh, we need to fight uh, against anti-Semitism and that uh, the, Jewish, the, the French Jewish population is part of the French nation. And this is something uh, our political authorities stress regularly, that these are French citizens like every other, and that the Jewish religi religion belongs to France to, and to the French history. So that's, that's for, first of all, uh, for all a, a thing I want to state before perhaps mentioning uh, the, the, um, the focus of the, the current action plan that has been adopted for, uh, for the years 2018-2020. We consider that actually, uh, well, we, we have a specific structure dedicated to, to this issue, the DILCRA, Délégation Interministérielle à la Lutte contre uh, le Racisme et l'Antisémitisme. So it's a kind of national agency in charge of coordinating policies uh, of fight against antisemitism and race, racism and antisemitism. It's under the, the direct authority of the Prime Minister. Uh, it, it has uh, a, a quite huge budget, actually, to, to deal with it, because it's an uh, annual budget of 6 million euros. And, uh, and I have to stress also that this, this structure works with uh, the different uh, representative bodies of the Jewish communities in France. So in close contact, we exchange with them. And actually, the, the two, I mean, there, there are many actions which are delivered in, 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 in the framework of these uh, action plans, but there are two topics I would like to stress uh, most uh, specifically. The, the first one is uh, the fight against hate speech and anti-Semitic speech on the internet. Uh, we, I think we are all aware that this is uh, one of our major challenges uh, nowadays. And we, I mean, we, we actually, support together with uh, uh, other EU member states initiative to have a legal framework at EU level on this. But I, I want to stress that we already are in the process at the national level of adopting legislation on this. It has been adopted already by the Assemblée Nationale, which is the, uh, the lower chamber. It's going to be examined by the Senate on the 17th of December. Just to maybe stress uh, one key element is that this law envisages uh, an obligation to withdraw a content within 24 hours and uh, that it can be fined with a fine of up to 1 million euros. Um, generally speaking, we work also on the better coordination with, first of all, uh, the, the flaggers, those who actually send the messages that there are these cont contents, and we try to set up a system of trusted flaggers and we have also a, a close dialogue with actually the providers of uh, internet services in order also for, uh, to, to have them uh, adopt uh, certain codes of conduct in order to, to fight against this. So this is one of the key elements of, uh, of our national strategies to fight against hate speech on, on internet. The other key element is education. Uh, so obviously we, we stress uh, the importance to, to have this in, in the programs, in the schooling programs. We do have this in the schooling programs and we have had it for years, but we, we, uh, just to stress that we continue to, to dedicate a huge means to that. We, uh, we have partnerships with different institutions, national or uh, international institutions. Uh, for instance, we, we will have one million more euros dedicated to our, our national memorial for the Shoah. Um, and uh, we are also in the process of uh, including uh, uh, the issue of fight against anti-Semitism in the, in the training of policemen. Uh, we have also uh, youth projects, and I just want to mention perhaps quickly a project that is uh, dear to, to, to our heart which is the project uh, Convoy 77, which you may have heard of. Uh, the Convoy 77 was the last convoy uh, uh, leaving from, uh, from uh, Drancy, from France, to, to Auschwitz. And uh, uh, m there were many nationalities represented in this convoy. So uh, the, what we set up is, uh, is, a, it's a, is a project with, all, uh, with schools in all the countries 
the, uh, the deported persons were, were coming from uh, in order to have the pupils actually addressing this issue through, through the through, through pedagogical project. And we will have a, an event under the presidency of uh, President Macron uh, in January 2020 in Paris. Thank you. Uh, Ron Brumer, uh, looking at it from Israel's point of view, you, you talk about the new anti-Semitism. Tell us what you mean by that. So, uh, good morning, Steve. Good morning, everyone. First of all, as a grandson of four Holocaust survivors, three of them survived Auschwitz, I see it as a life mission to deal with these issues. So I commend and salute the Jerusalem Post for having this very important session in this very prestigious conference. Um, we recognize three sources of anti-Semitism, if I could say, um, nowadays all over the world. One of them is the classic anti-Semitism coming from, from the extreme right, the rabid, violent anti-Semitism. That is the anti-Semitism of Pittsburgh, of Halle, and so many other uh, cases. Uh, the other source is mainly led by Islamists. Um, anti-Semitism, this is the anti-Semitism of uh, Hiper Kasher, of the school in Toulouse, of the ultra-Orthodox rabbi that is beaten in Brooklyn, or an Israeli who speaks Hebrew in Berlin. The third type or the third source of anti-Semitism is much more elusive because it disguises itself behind a mask, as you've seen earlier, uh, of uh, human rights and civil society activity. That is the anti-Semitism that comes from the, normally from the far left, the extreme left, and that is the anti-Zionism or the delegitimization of um, the Jewish people and the right to have their own sovereign country. Now, while dealing with the two first sources that I've mentioned of anti-Semitism is extremely crucial. That is, you know, what governments do and should be continued doing. We believe that um, dealing with a third type, the third source of anti-Semitism is still lacking a good response. And, and, and it's quite obvious why. As I said, most of the delegitimization movement against Israel is disguising itself behind a mask of human rights, of uh, dignified words such as equality and freedom and justice. But in matter of fact, the real purpose is, uh, as I said, to delegitimize Israel and its right to exist. Um, and so I believe eventually there are two amazing role models on, on this side and on this side of countries that have taken uh, this challenge and dealt with it seriously. Um, and there are so many different tools that should be taken by all countries, I assume, that are represented here, may it be um, adopting and implementing the IHRA definition, maybe dealing with social media and removing um, anti-Zionist, rapidly anti-Semitic content from social media, um, dealing with um, with the civic, with the social um, uh, social movements in in the countries. The ambassador talked about the civil society, which is very important, and I agree. The problem is that civil society organizations and NGOs are being hijacked by these narratives of anti-Zionism uh, or anti-Semitism anti disguised uh, behind anti-Zionism. And this is something that should be dealt with. On one hand, many countries, mainly in Europe, condemn the BDS movement and condemn uh, the delegitimization of Israel. But on the other hand, they fund organizations that do exactly the same. We believe that this contradiction should be solved um, uh, in, in a manner that will uh, remove the mask and make sure that these people that promote that uh, will be accountable. Thank you. Um, Paul, do you think that the, uh, responding to what all the other panelists said, the rise of anti-Semitism in Europe, or apparent rise, contributes to the, the rise of anti-Semitism in the US? And if so, what can be done to combat that? Sure. Um, you know, clearly in this day and age of technology, like Your Excellency was saying, you know, a tweet, a message, anything out there could really light the little spark that's going to light the bigger fire. But the way I look at it, it really comes down to education. And there's so much more that unites than divides us, especially when it comes to the youth of today. The youth of today listen to the same music, they watch the same sports, they use the same social media platforms, they use the same devices. At the end of the day, we've partnered in certain countries with multiple countries to bring youth from around the world to help clean or you know, heritage sites. Heritage sites would mean old synagogues, cemeteries. I can give you an example of this past summer in Belarus, in the city of Mir. Mir, uh, 
Amir Yeshiva now here in Israel, in America, hundreds of thousands of graduates from the Mir Yeshiva. The Mir Cemetery, 423 uh, tombstones were cleaned, reset, put back up. And when speaking to the students, I asked them why. Why did you want to do this? And they said, well, if we don't do this, who is going to? It's our heritage. This is where we came from. And these were students from Israel, from the United States, from Moldova, from Belarus, from Lithuania. And it's something where we see there is hope. I am, I'm an optimist. There is hope that if we do uh, put money into projects like this, do help preserve our heritage, there is going to be a next generation out there that wants to know what happened, what did their grandparents do? What happened to their grandparents? But what did our grandparents do to those other people? And there is that, re that reawakening in Eastern Europe. It might not be happening in Western Europe, where I believe there is a much greater uh, significance of anti-Semitism. It is much harder to walk in Germany or in France wearing a yarmulke. It's not as hard to walk in Eastern Europe wearing a yarmulke. Wearing, walking in Eastern Europe, you actually have people come over and ask questions and want to tell you about stories that they heard what their grandparents did. You walk around Vilnius. In Vilnius, the mayor of Vilnius took a very brave step this past year, went up against the nationalistic um, popular party there and ripped down a plaque which honored uh, Jonas Norieka, a Nazi collaborator, who had a plaque up on one of the um, buildings in Vilnius. He caught flack for it. But you know what? You do the right thing. When you do the right thing, at the end of the day, you're going to be successful. And the United States is going to be there, is going to help the countries that want to help. We're there to help preserve every last thing that it had to do with the, with the Holocaust. What makes America so special today is everybody that did come to America from the Holocaust. And from those ashes, we now have some of the smartest people that came from Europe, and we're benefiting from them. And the one thing I'm sorry, Steve, before I give it back to everybody else is, you know, what I hope everybody here can come away from, at least the United States point of view is, and why I'm here, any other diplomat that wants to have the United States come in, help them preserve their heritage, help us support you, we're here for that. And the same way that the United States stands with Israel when it comes to military, defense, intelligence, we stand with Israel and the Jewish people when we say never again and never forget. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Frederick, um, in the spirit of what Paul just said, what are France and Israel doing to cooperate in, in this sphere? Uh, I understand you have, for example, annual meetings between the two governments. Yes, indeed. We, we, we have annual meetings uh, on the issue of fight against anti-Semitism. Uh, so on the French side, it's actually our... Uh, 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 head of the DILCA, so uh, uh, of the Delegation for Fight Against Racism and Antisemitism, so Frédéric Potier, who, uh, who is heading uh, this, this dialogue, and he came uh, uh, earlier this month uh, to, to, to have a, a bilateral exchange, but also a multilateral exchange, because President Rivlin, uh, first of all, organized a meeting for uh, several national coordinators, coordinator, sorry, in the uprun of uh, the, the event on the 23rd of January 2020 uh, at Yad Vashem uh, to commemorate uh, the 75th birthday uh, of the liberation of the Auschwitz camp where our uh, president uh, Emmanuel Macron is going to, to attend. So we, we do have this, uh, this national coordin uh, this, sorry, this uh, uh, binational uh, dialogue, but I want to say also it's working in a multilateral way. We, we could exchange, for instance, with uh, also the German coordinator who attended the same meeting. Uh, there were several national coordinators uh, attending. If you want uh, to, to address the more specific issue of uh, what we do at the, at the bilateral level, so I mentioned the, the project on the Convoy 77, because again, as has been mentioned, uh, we considered that uh, our uh, our work is also to, to work with the youth and to work in the education of youth and to, to in, uh, the transmission of, uh, of, uh, of, the, uh, of the, 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 the memory of the past. 
Okay. Um, as our time's running out, I'm going to be undiplomatic, Ambassador Reiner, and throw you what they call in America a curveball. What is your view on uh, Secretary Pompeo's recent announcement uh, that recognizing that settlements uh, are not legal, uh, uh, illegal, and also the European Court's decision to uh, label products coming from settlements, including the Golan Heights, uh, West Bank, and East Jerusalem? Both questions, of course, have nothing to do with anti-Semitism, and whatever position I'm going to take on that cannot be uh, minked with that. So, Acqu uh, According to Secretary Pompeo, anti-Zionism is anti-Semitism. Um, first uh, part of your question, um, the declaration of uh, uh, Secretary of State Pompeo does not change international law. Um, the law of belligerent occupation is being guided by many um, rules of international law, humanitarian law, the Charter of the United Nations, binding resolutions of the Security Council. Um, Germany is committed to public international law. Israel is committed to public international law. Israel dealt with the occupied territories according to humanitarian law, international humanitarian law so, so far. So we will have to discuss uh, um, in the international community how to deal with this change of, uh, um, of interpretation of international law. And uh, your second question regarding the uh, recent uh, decision of the uh, uh, European Court of Justice. It is not an anti-Semitic decision. It is not directed against Israel. It is a technical decision. Um, it uh, um, referred to one area because this one area was brought to the court. The court can't decide on everything else in such a decision. And it is in the framework of a consumer production to indicate uh, the origin um, of a product, the place of a uh, the origin of, of, of the place. It is not directed against Israel, and it doesn't change anything because it is uh, on the basis of law that already existed. But Ron Brumer, despite what the ambassador says, do you not think that such decisions by the European High Court feed anti-Israel sentiments and anti-Semitism as you define it, the new anti-Semitism? The question is absolutely, the, the answer is absolutely. Eventually, anti-Semitism and anti-Zionism are inter intertwined. As uh, Paul said, anti-Zionism is anti-Semitism. Criticism against uh, the policy of the Israeli government is a great thing. I criticize my own government all the time. That's great. Double standard against Israel. Putting Israel aside, outside of uh, the standard that is being taken against um, other countries is anti-Semitism by the IHRA definition, which I obviously um, encourage everyone to, to learn and to, uh, and to engage with. The bottom line is, Steve, from my point of view, is that disguising anti-Semitism behind these terms of, no, I'm not anti-Semitic, I'm just anti-Zionist, or I'm just against Israel, or I just don't think Israel should exist, is anti-Semitism. This mask should be taken down, uh, these kind of decisions um, have anti-Semitic roots, um, and I, uh, I hope that many of the countries that are represented here will take the lead, like the countries that are represented here on stage, that are a role model of combating both old and new anti-Semitism, and to take the necessary measures. Ambassador, would you like to respond to that? assumption that the European Court of, uh, um, of uh, the, the European Court could be anti-Semit is totally absurd and um, um, we in the European Union on the basis of public international law we differentiate between Israel that has our full support we are committed to this country to the security of the country and to the occupied territories and uh, the, inter the European Court did nothing but to uphold this differentiation. Paul Packer, you, you and I were discussing earlier the concept of sunshine. 
Do you want to elaborate on that? Sure. I could tell you, I would say it again, talking about sunshine, I'll say it again what I mentioned a few minutes ago. The idea of no daylight between the United States and Israel, everyone knows there's no daylight when it comes to military, security, intelligence, defense, many things. But again, when it comes to the idea of anti-Semitism, Holocaust remembrance, Holocaust denial, there's absolutely no daylight between the United States and Israel with the words never again and never forget. We are there and we will make sure, as the President Trump said last year, under his leadership, this never would have happened. Again, we're here to make sure that the world never will forget. Thank you. Uh, Frederick Rogue, your concluding comments. Well, first of all, I would like to thank you for, for, for inviting us uh, to, to this panel on, on this topic. Uh, just to, to, to add my voice to uh, the, uh, the, uh, the voice of Ambassador Reiner, I think uh, we, we still need, and I agree that behind BDS you, you can have uh, anti-Semitic anti -Semitic movements, but we should not mingle up with uh, decisions which are taken just because of a stance we have uh, concerning application of international law. These are separate topics. Um, so we, we, we need to continue, I think, to, uh, to make better understand also the, the, the work we do uh, within Europe and also society-wise. I think we, when we were talking about Eastern Europe, about Western Europe, I think we, we, we need to recall also that, uh, I mean, France has had a long history of remembrance after the war uh, uh, of the Shoah, and I just want to recall of uh, the, the, the stance Jacques Chirac, who, who, who died in September, took on French responsibility for, uh, uh, for deportation of uh, French nationals, the, the responsibility of French administration. So a lot of work has been done uh, in our na national narrative on these topics. Thank you uh, all so much, and thank you for um, participating in a fascinating panel discussion. Thank you.